Hi, my name's Nick, and this is Matt here with me. Uh, we're bringing uh, FM Live to you this week. Uh, we're talking about uh, cooling system upgrades and uh, basic maintenance that you can do to keep your car uh, running cool during uh, the summer. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please mention them in the comments below, and we will try to get to them before we uh, finish the broadcast. Um, to start off with, uh, best thing you can do is just check the current condition of your cooling system. So you want to check the condition of all the rubber lines uh, in the engine bay that carry coolant. If they're dried up or hard to the touch or they're not very pliable anymore, it, it may be time to go ahead and replace those. Um, it, you don't want them blowing a, a hole in the line and leaking coolant on the track, especially, or while you're driving around on the street, it can definitely strand you. Um, so a visual inspection of all the rubber cooling hoses um, is a good place to start. After that, you want to check the color of the coolant that's actually in the cooling system. You can do that just by popping the radiator cap and looking in there. If you still see bright green coolant, yeah, that's a good sign. Uh, if it's starting to look kind of a rust colored brown or kind of sludgy, it's most likely time to do a radiator flush and replace that coolant that's in there. Um, also with uh, these cars, it's a good thing to check the color of the end tanks on the stock radiator. Once they start to get kind of old, um, they start to change to kind of a yellowish color and then that eventually they, do, they can and do blow out. Uh, so if you're starting to see signs of that on your existing radiator, it may be time to start shopping for a replacement. Um, another uh, failure point here is the overflow bottle. Uh, the same thing applies when that plastic starts to get older, it starts to yellow and it even can form holes in that bottle over time. And uh, it's another uh, leak point that can be easily missed. Um, so it's a good thing to upgrade as well while you're in there. Um, the ideal coolant ratio that you wanna use, we typically stick to around 70% water, distilled water and 30% coolant here. Um, we don't get that much cold weather where we're at in the mountains. So we can kind of get away with a little less freeze protection. Uh, depending on where you are, you may have to go with more of a 50-50 mix uh, to prevent uh, anything freezing in your engine block over the winter. Um, you can run pure water. We typically don't recommend that. We would want to add uh, some water water uh, here to that to uh, help uh, add in the um, additives that help keep the inside of the cooling system from rusting out. Um, you also want to check your radiator cap. Um, over time, radiator caps can and do go bad. Um, so it's, if it hasn't been replaced in a while, it's another good thing to check. They're very cheap, very easy to replace. Um, so if you're in there already doing some servicing work on your cooling system, it's a great thing to replace. I have a question. Yes. Why is water, a uh, higher percentage of water better for? Uh, water transfers heat better. So essentially when you're running a higher percentage of water, like 70% distilled water and 30% coolant, you can transfer a little more heat and uh, help keep the car uh, at the correct operating temperature without overheating. Um, another thing you can do um, while you're servicing the cooling system is check out the heat exchangers in the front. So if you have an intercooler, check to see what kind of condition the fins in that intercooler are in, if they're bent or damaged from rock strikes or anything else like that. Um, anything you can do to straighten those out and keep them in good shape. Same thing applies for your AC condenser if you still have that, um, or the, the radiator as well. Um, any damage to those fins, um, knocked over or bent fins like that, um, that can affect the ability of that heat exchanger to transfer heat. So it's a good thing to, to check into there and make sure all three of your heat exchangers, if you have those three, are all in good condition. Um, another thing you could do is uh, to remove um, any screen um, or license plate that might be blocking that entryway into your front bumper and, and, and impeding airflow. Um, we've seen some people put those like bug catchers or rock catchers in front of that, uh, that airstream there, and that can affect how much airflow gets through all of your heat exchangers. Um, so if there's anything like that in the way, especially if bugs or other gunk has started to accumulate, that is all affecting the airflow that's going over um, your radiator, your intercooler, and your AC condenser, and that will affect how well your cooling system can uh, maintain the operating temperature of your, of your Miata. Um, another thing you can do is to check the uh, voltage at your fans to ensure they're getting full voltage, that your wiring's in good condition. It's also a good idea to check the ground at that point to make sure it's also in good condition so that you're getting full voltage to the fans, you're getting a clean ground, that way you know that they're operating at full uh, capacity as well. Um, something else you can do is to make sure that you seal off all the gaps between your heat exchangers. So if you still have um, the AC condenser and the radiator, um, if you don't have an intercooler, you wanna seal up that tiny little gap that's between the AC condenser and the radiator to ensure that none of the airflow that goes through um, escapes around and doesn't go through the second heat exchanger in the stack. If you have an intercooler, this is even more important. You want to try to do your best to make sure all the airflow that comes in through the front bumper goes through the heat exchanger and not up and around or underneath. Um, something that you can do to keep that from happening is to make sure that that plastic under tray that comes with your car is still in place. Um, that is a critical part of the cooling system 
And especially once you start modifying your Miata, if you get into the turbocharging aspect of things, um, it's really critical to keep that in place um, to avoid that airflow dodging or getting around your heat exchangers rather than going through them. Um, you can also use, uh, you can use weather stripping like rubber weather strip material to help seal those gaps. You can also use aluminum uh, HVAC tape to try to um, seal those gaps and force air to go through all of your heat exchangers. Uh, and then uh, from there, uh, we can move into some of the upgrades that we uh, that we carry and that we recommend uh, to go on. And I'll let Matt take that one. Gotcha. Thanks, Nick. So, like Mitch, Nick mentioned, uh, the basic uh, basic maintenance is, is super important. We've had multiple cars come through here in the shop that um, bad radiators. One would think that you would see this and notice it before it comes to a catastrophic catastrophic failure, but things happen quickly. You can't get off to the side of the road fast enough and you blow a head gasket, scorch pistons, uh, and, and cylinder wall. So um, a little bit of basic maintenance goes a long way. We know that it's not very fun and cool to, to, to do these these uh, maintenance tasks, but it is, it is vital to uh, have the car going, of course, and uh, things that you can build off of for the shiny parts that we'll show you here. So. Uh, like Nick mentioned, a uh, uh, good radiator cap is important. If you think yours is good and you're having issues, get it tested, replace it, get that one tested. If you're in an area, like mentioned, Nick mentioned, um, that you don't have to have so much coolant protection, freeze protection, I should say, uh, 22 to 24 pound cap is great. Um, but we would do, always do a strict, just straight uh, uh, water, what do we call it? Distilled water, there you mm -hmm. go, tricky, uh, with that. Um, let's see here. Ah, look, a radiator. <laughs> so after you got those all checked off, um, this is our design of a crossflow radiator. The, the reason why this is better than stock, hey, look, no plastic, no plastic bits uh, in important areas. So nice aluminum uh, tanks, fins. It has an excellent fin design and will last long, 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 very long time. Um, what you can do, so the way I usually work this is with a customer, um, you know, first things first, always have a good radiator. And you can use your stock fans with this radiator. Um, if you're force inducted, we suggest uh, probably not, or give it a whirl, just keep an eye on your engine temperatures. So if you're not able to keep your engine temperatures in check, then that's when we would say to go to one of our airflow kits. We have three stages for most customers most most cars stage one is some um, spall fans i thought we had one out here but we don't um, you, you can see it on their website pretty basic spall makes a great fan that has a lot of pull so stacking heat exchangers like nick mentioned uh, ic ac obviously a radiator it takes a lot of draw to get through those and a lot of other companies unlike spall um, will throw out some numbers in there that really aren't uh, true data to you know your driving conditions. So keep that in mind when you're shopping around for fans. So that was stage one. Stage two uh, is going to be a single larger fan. I believe it's a 14 inch uh, and it's going to be a brushless style. So it has a brain with it, we're going to say. And pretty much it has its own sensor. You're going to tap into a heat source very close to the engine, upper radiator hose if you have a reroute uh, back there. Uh, we want a good signal close to the engine for that, and it will command that fan. Um, stage three is very similar, more airflow because we have two fans there instead of just one. So if those don't solve your problems and you are okay with body modifications, I think I'll jump to the louvers as in progressions of, hey, you need to do this to your cooling system. Um, for the best bang for your buck. So louvers are great, especially for your NA and NV uh, chassis. Uh, there's a, hey, look, we have a louver. Um, there is a lot of air that gets packed into the engine compartment that can't escape. So with louvers properly, um, not on that car, properly fitted and, uh, and uh, installed uh, will help extract the heat, allow the heat to get out of the engine bay, which is always nice. Seems like I should have let you take, take a couple of those. Um, so if you don't want to have any body modifications, I would suggest uh, our reroute next. Um, it's definitely not the first thing to go to. I would always start with our basic stuff that Mick, Nick mentioned, um, radiator, airflow kit, and then reroute. 
Um, it's definitely not the silver bullet here, but when it is combined with these other things, it can uh, tilt the table to your benefits there. Nice machine piece. It does, ha does have provisions for, um, so that you can reroute your hot turbo coolant also, so it doesn't go back into the engine to superheat that uh, coolant there also. So the, the other portion of the reroute, or the main portion is to keep the cylinders a little bit more even on cooling. The internet has blown up about this, that it's catastrophic if you don't have one. Um, while this will help, um, we leave it at the end of the list because, um, well, we just don't think if you only do that and that piece alone, it's really not going to help with your cooling situations enough to keep the, the engine light off or the coolant down to operating temps. All right, Nick, I think. Uh... All right, so uh, let's go ahead and move into the uh, questions that we got beforehand on these. And again, if you have questions that you'd like us to answer that we haven't covered yet, uh, please mention them in the comments and we will try to get to them here before the video ends. Uh, so I'll go ahead and start off with the first question we received here. Uh, so uh, someone here asked, uh, with the coil radiator, uh, his uh, data logger is showing that his coolant temperatures uh, with 50% water and 50% coolant at 100 and He's seeing about 190 to 194 degrees at freeway speeds, uh, about 70 to 80 miles an hour, um, 200 to 205 degrees idling, idling in traffic uh, with no other cooling mods. Um, he says he also sees a little bit uh, hotter temperatures with the AC running. Is that within the safe range? Uh, so in our experience, when you get to about 225, 230 degrees, that's when you want to shut the car down and let it cool. Um, that's, that's really, really hot and that's, you don't want to see them that high. Um, typically, anywhere between 200 to 212 degrees Fahrenheit is fairly normal for these cars. If you're turbocharged, maybe even a little hotter than that, it's going to be pretty standard. Um, once you get past the 220 degree mark, it's definitely time to start looking for a place to stop the car and let it cool down a little bit. So this person had a data logger or an actual gauge with stock stock yes. uh, gauge clusters. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have that option. So um, the needle is kind of someplace around, what is this, uh, 10 or 11-ish? Mm -hmm. And it'll usually stay there until bad things are kind of appearing in your future, and it'll slowly creep up. So once you see it slowly creep up to, I don't know, two or three or something like that, that's an indicator that, hey, I'm reaching this 230 mark pretty soon, and I need to change my behaviors. Yep. If that needle's going past that 12 o'clock mark, it's time to start looking for a place to either slow down or let the car park and cool down for a little bit. Um, once you get past that one or two o'clock mark, it's pretty hot and it's time to shut the car off. Um, so let's see here. Um, had a question about how to wire in the passenger side uh, air conditioning fan for a car without AC to help provide additional cooling. So having both fans running. Um, so one way you can do that is if you grab the relay and wiring from a salvage Miata or um, uh, that you can find somewhere, uh, you can, uh, the harness plug is already there and you can simply wire in uh, the trigger in parallel with the, uh, the main fan so that both fans will run at the same time and that'll help give you a little bit more airflow when you're idling uh, in traffic, for example, uh, and not having enough airflow, having that second fan turn on and pull some more air through your heat exchangers can help uh, keep your car happy while it's in traffic. On that, uh, if you look at our 1-6 instructions, we, um, I think we include a breaker and we're coming out right off of the alternator terminal so we have a good power source um, to supply. The 1-6s were pretty bad at, at um, good power to fans just because of the age of the car and the wire gauge so uh, that's why we offer that but you can still use that uh, thought or theory with your other generations uh, bring it off of a good known source and just run a breaker i'm sorry a um a relay to trigger your other side okay and the next question we had uh, is there a way to better support or utilize the cursed water plug on the 1.6 entrance uh so the, the coolant hose uh, core kit that we sell uh, to replace all the rubber coolant lines in the engine bay does include a plug um, that can reinstall there. Um, so if, that, if you're seeing a little bit of seepage from the plug on your car, it's probably time to get that replaced. Um, so a replacement cap or uh, equivalent rubber cap can be used to reseal that off there uh, so you don't have to worry about it. We know it's kind of a pain to get to back there, um, but if you're seeing a leak kind of down the back side of the engine and that seems to be the source, um, it's time to just replace that rubber cap. Since I'm not sourced in uh, one six, all one six knowledge, Ethan, do you know why that plug is there, or why isn't it hooked up to something? Um, so on front wheel drive cars, um, a lot of times they'll have the oil cooler, um, but obviously on one point six rear wheel drive cars, they don't have it. 
uh, 1.8s they do, and it just runs that line to the back of the head. So it sounds like it has to do with the uh, front wheel drive position of the engine where it originated from. They actually use that as a cooling source. So thanks. Mm -hmm. um, so another question we had was, are there any benefits to having the coolant reroute installed on an otherwise stock engine uh, for street driving? Um, we did kind of cover that a little bit. It's not really a silver bullet. It's a good uh, piece to add in as like a pu the final puzzle piece for a complete cooling system on your car. Uh, but if you are to say turbocharge your Miata and leave the radiator and the cooling fan stock, it's definitely not going to help enough to keep your car from overheating. You still need to have a good radiator. You still need to have a good airflow kit, whether that's upgraded fans or an upgraded shroud or both. Uh, and it's also critical to keep the, the ducting going to seal all of the gaps around all of your heat exchangers up front to make sure all that airflow is going through those heat exchangers. Um, the reroute definitely helps um, on track and certainly it is a good final piece of the puzzle for, for a good cooling system, uh, but it's not, like Matt said, it's not a silver bullet. Um, so running only a reroute and no other cooling upgrades, you're likely still gonna see some pretty hot temperatures if you're using your Miata on track or it's turbocharged and you know creating more heat than it would normally. The next question we had um, is the under tray and the stock plastics up front actually needed to provide adequate cooling? Yes, um, the under tray is a, a critical part of the cooling system because it helps seal up the bottom of the radiator and the AC condenser from the factory um, to keep that air from ducking down underneath those heat exchangers. Um, so that does need to be in place. If your car does not have that, um, we'd recommend installing one. Um, we do carry replacements on our web store. Um, if yours is in pretty tattered shape, like most of them are at this point, uh, those plastic pieces don't tend to last very long. Um, they get damaged very easily. Any road debris hops up and damages them. Um, that can all affect how effective your, your cooling system is and your heat exchangers are at processing the air that goes um, through them. If that is not in place, then a lot of that air is going to be ducking underneath those heat exchangers and simply not flowing over them at all, um, which means that your cooling system is not going to be operating as efficiently as it could be otherwise. So on this question, it is... Uh is V mounting the radiator um, worth the effort for high horsepower Miatas? HPDE car is the question there. And if you're doing a, a V mounted radiator, I would say we definitely want to see it because that's really neat. Um, yes, the theory is that would work real, real, real well, uh, but your specific question is it worth the effort? Um, probably not. There's other ways radiator airflow uh, air kits, uh, reroutes, the things that we mentioned here. That would be a lot more easy to keep your temperatures in check um, than, a, than a V mount. But yeah, you look at your supercars, you know, they'll have the radiator up here and then right behind the radiator, they'll evac all that temperature um, past the roof of the engine. So those two, those compartments are separated for a good reason. A good question. I liked it. Uh, what is the best coolant mix to run? We covered that. We like 70 30 or more water if you can handle it in your region. So mm -hmm. always use a rust preventative if you're just running straight distilled. And this one is, uh, is the, uh, I'm sorry? The more water you use, the higher pressure caffeine. Yes. Yep. So don't forget about the, the higher concentration of water. You do need to raise your pressure on your cap. And then someone mentioned about synthetic coolant uh, for Mishimoto. Is it better normal? Uh, I would reach out to your Mishimoto rep because I am not aware of, of that product. So I'll have to pass, sorry. <laughs> uh, another question we got was, how do I keep my 1.6 short nose engine uh, from overheating the fourth cylinder? Uh, one way you can uh, try to address the, the lack of coolant flow to that last cylinder is the coolant reroute kit. Um, again, it's not a silver bullet, but it will help equalize the cooling between cylinders. So especially on Miatas that are turbocharged or are being used in harsh environments like a track um, event, especially a long track event, um, this can help um, avoid uh, any issues with cylinder four getting too hot. Um, another question we got was, what is the correct uh, or best way to run the water wetter uh, product here? Um, mixed with coolant, uh, water wetter with distilled water only. Is this safe for a streetcar that sees cold weather? Um, so you don't want to mix this with actual coolant. It will cause kind of deposits that will build up in your cooling system and that you'll need to then clean out. Um, so we don't recommend running this with coolant. Um, if you're running just distilled water, we would recommend adding some of this in because the additives that are in this are also present in actual coolant and help keep your engine from rusting out inside there. 
Um, you wouldn't want to use um, this if you need freeze protection in the winter, especially if you're driving your car around uh, while it's cold out. Um, this does not offer any freezing uh, protection like coolant does. So in the fall, if you live somewhere where it gets cold enough to freeze and you're still gonna be driving your Miata, you will need to change your distilled water and water wetter out uh, for some actual coolant uh, to, to maintain your freeze protection there. This next one is, uh, can I, should I run without a thermostat? Uh, is it safe? What are the dangers? Boy, um, I think even for a race car, I would say it's not a good idea. You always want to bring your engine up to temperature uh, for lots of reasons. Oil contamination, you won't get your burn off. Uh, efficiency, efficiency actually means horsepower, everyone. Don't forget about that. Um, so yes, a cold engine is probably not the most efficient and uh, best use of your power. So I would say always run a thermostat to bring it up to operating temperatures. So the next one is uh, NC. So I have an NC, is it worth upgrading my radiator? It kind of goes back to all generations. Obviously the older NA and NBs, we're, we point out a little bit more on that, but uh, if, you're, if you have a factory radiator and the tanks are looking less than shiny and new and black, they're green or gray, then sure, it's a good time to choose some sort of cross-flow aluminum style radiator. So you, you, the NCs don't have as much of an issue of overheating, so the capacity, the thickness, everything like that, as long as you stick to a stock capacity uh, or better, then there really isn't uh, an issue. So. Uh, so another question we got, um, how do I know when I need to upgrade my cooling system components? Um, so we kind of discussed a little bit earlier about that. Um, if you're seeing that temperature gauge move past that 12 o'clock mark, um, you want to, uh, this is mostly for NA and NBs, but especially if, if you see that, that uh, coolant temperature gauge moving past that 12 o'clock mark, um, it's likely time to begin um, at least looking into the, the current uh, state of your cooling system, whether that's just checking the rubber hoses, checking the coolant um, condition, um, all the other things we discussed at the very beginning there. Um, that's when you want to start checking into everything here. Um, when you see that needle moving out to, to the one or even two o'clock positions, that's when it's time to consider pulling over and, and turning the car off to let it cool down. Um, so if you're seeing that frequently, um, or at all, honestly, it's a good time to check and look at all those basic things and then begin upgrading from there if you see any concerns. Um, so if you, like Matt just mentioned, if your radiator and tanks are starting to look um, uh, worse for wear, it's a good time to replace the radiator, change all the cooling out, and kind of hit all of those things at once and kind of build from there if you're still seeing issues um, overheating. Um, so we got another question uh, regarding the minimum recommended cooling upgrades for a turbo car. Uh, so on any and Bs, we typically will tell people that it's you can run with the stock radiator, but in most cases, you're gonna wind up needing a, a, an upgraded aluminum radiator, um, partly to get rid of those end tanks, and partly because the stock radiator just simply can't shed quite enough heat once you've added a turbocharger into, this, into the mix, especially if you're gonna be doing track days or autocrossing, or, or you live in a really, really hot climate during the summer. Um, all of those things are factors. The turbo adds a lot of extra heat into the system, and the stock cooling system on the N and B cars is kind of at its limit, even in stock trim. So you will likely need an upgrade radiator. We also like to recommend at that same uh, point, it's a good time to upgrade to one of our airflow kits, uh, upgraded fans, upgraded fan shroud. Um, and at that point, it's also a good idea to at least consider doing some ducting. Again, that's gonna kind of depend on your usage. So a lot of people with turbo NA and NBs can get away with just an upgraded radiator, one of our airflow kits, and they'll be just fine. If you're doing racing um, or anything else, uh, really beating on the car, you may need to look into some of the other cool upgrades we've mentioned like these hood vents, um, the reroute um, and full ducting all the way underneath the car can help too. So even our naturally aspirated customers can have issues mm -hmm. running AC at highway speeds. Yep. Um, so this isn't just for force induction or race car Correct. drivers here. Mm -hmm. um, the higher the RPM, the more heat, you throw some AC in there and right there you're, you're having a bit of a heating issue. Mm -hmm. Yep, you definitely don't need a turbocharger to be seeing heat issues um, on track or even on the street uh, with the AC running sometimes. Um, so anything you can do to improve the efficiency of the parts that you have in there now um, or upgrading the more efficient pieces uh, to help increase your cooling system capacity uh, is going to help you there. Um, uh, next question we got uh, looks like uh, water meth injection. Does it work? Is it worth it? Are there any drawbacks or dangers? Um, is it good for boosted cars only or good for stock engines? Um, a couple questions <laughs> built in there. Uh, so it does work, um, but it, we found that it can be kind of fickle uh, and it's there's because there's a couple of control systems that go along with it and nozzles that spray the, the mixture into the engine, um, it basically introduces a couple of other failure points. Um, so a better way to get around is 
this is to use something like flex fuel um, to help uh, increase the ability uh, to cool the intake charge down uh, and make a little more power there without running into spark, uh, spark knock or pre-ignition uh, issues. Yeah, E85 flex fuel, if people are yes. familiar. Yes, sorry, I should have clarified that. Yeah, yeah. it helps us extract heat. Mm -hmm. yep, awesome. Yep, exactly. So, do radiator shrouds covers work? Uh, hey, listen to the beginning of this part, portion. Yes, you need radiator shrouds and a good seal to your radiator. Does my street car need an aftermarket oil cooler, or is it, or is that only beneficial uh, for race cars? For naturally aspirated cars, I would say probably not. Um, for forced induction, even with our stage one turbo kit, um, with you know average horsepower, I would say it's not a bad idea. Um, depending on where you live and how hard you push the car, you can see some temperatures that the oil uh, cooler oil would, would benefit from. Uh, next question we got was, how often should I flush and maintain my cooling system? How do I know if it needs to be changed? Um, so we did kind of cover that a little bit, but again, uh, checking the color of the cooling uh, of the coolant in there is, is a good uh, indicator. Um, if you have a lot of times you'll see green or orange coolant. Um, if it's still pretty close to the original color that it was when you originally poured it in there, that's a good sign. If you're starting to see sludge um, or rust colored kind of fluid in there, uh, that's likely time for you to at least drain and flush out the existing coolant and refill. Um, how often, that's gonna depend on where you are, how hard you use the car, uh, how often the car is driven. Um, there's, there's a lot of factors there. Um, essentially, the easiest way is just to keep an eye on the color of the coolant, um, or if you're using distilled water and water wetter, you won't have that much coloring in the system, so it'll be a little harder to tell, uh, but you can still look for contaminants, uh, particles, um, rust color buildup, anything inside there is, is not good. You, you, don't, you wanna see, if you're using just water, you, you just wanna see clear, uh, uh, fluid in there. If you're using coolant, you want it to be as close to the original color as possible. Distilled water is pretty important even when you're running uh, yes. freeze protection too. Mm -hmm. uh, with any tap water, you always have some contaminants in there and it plugs up your system. Exactly. Slowly over time. Mm -hmm. so. Yep. If you if you use distilled water every time, you can keep those build up, uh, build ups from happening and the coolant will last quite a lot longer and you can even reuse it between changes sometimes if it's in good enough condition. Yep. Good point. All right, so the next question we had was, uh, why is the crossflow radiator better? Uh, do I need a crossflow or will a stock style replacement be fine? Want to take it on? Sure, we've already kind of touched on this. Uh, crossflow, the design, the thickness. Raina has done a lot of sweaty uh, um, nerdy things in our dyno trying to figure these things out and you came to a conclusion. We like this thickness. Thicker isn't always better for radiators because you do have more capacity, but once that comes up to a heat soak level, um, it really isn't as efficient as this thickness. So uh, cross flow, as in just as you would think of the explanation, the water starts at uh, room at the top here. This end, hot water comes out, goes in here, comes all the way through the thin fins. Cooler water comes out here. On your stock style, um, top and bottom, it doesn't work as well. There's not a uh, as much th this as there is that, so we, we, we prefer this. Spend more time in the tubes. Essentially, the coolant is spending more time in the tubes with our crossflow design uh, than the standard radiator, so it gives it more gives the airflow more time to pull that heat out of the coolant and helps keep the, the coolant coming out of the discharge side uh, even cooler than it would be out of a stock radiator. And do you need us, or do you have to do this, or just stock style? And we kind of cover that even for naturally aspirated. So. And for those of you who do want to read about uh, Brandon's extensive radiator testing, uh, you can find that information uh, that we have posted in the tech section on our website uh, underneath the, the header radiator testing. Uh, we get a lot of information on there that he compiled um, when he did this test. Um, and you can see all the data that we, uh, that we compiled and the conclusions that we came to. Yeah, a lot of this is going on in there, I'm pretty sure. So. <laughs> All right, so that's the, uh, the end of the uh, list of questions that we had uh, prior to the video. Do we have any others? We do. Uh, so do you sell an upgrade kit for the original version of the cooling reroute? The question is, do we sell a version of the reroute that we previously offered? An upgrade kit an for upgrade previous kit. reroute. I guess I don't know why. Do we they specify the which reroute? They don't. I have to assume that they're talking about either the, uh, the QMAX or the M-Tuned. Either way, the answer is no. We don't have an upgrade kit. There are not enough parts in common. So 
Oh. So maybe the upgrade is, hey, can I use my older reroute to, to divert my turbo coolant around? Um, unless you see past it, no, the answer is no, pretty much. Uh, Brandon did a lot of engineering on that so that he would have the right size ports and stuff to have differences uh, for, what's that word? Something siphoning? Uh, pressure differential. I pressure suppose. differential. Yeah, or thermal siphoning. There we go, thermal siphoning. Yeah. Which is different, but that's okay. He wants to add more, but no, no, just cut yep. it off. <laughs> he, he just clarified. He said the original one didn't include the turbo lines, and so our reroute base kit, you can upgrade that for the turbo. You may just want to clarify. Okay, so gotcha. if you okay. have our current reroute um, and you didn't opt for the, or we didn't offer at the beginning uh, lines for the turbo, we do have those sold separately that you can purchase and then you can uh, follow instructions and, and make it go. Yep. And if you have a non-FM kit, you cannot. Non-FM reroute kits, it's a no-go. Yeah. We'll put a link in the description or in the comments. We'll put a, we'll put a link to those in the comments. You can find those under the Turbo Connection kits on our website. We have lots of help. Thanks. <laughs> I think we got it because he said thanks. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> All right. Uh, here's an interesting one. Can reverse osmosis water be used, say 14 parts per million total dissolved solids? I'll let you take that one. <laughs> I can take that one if you would prefer. Yeah, I think I'll have to defer to Brandon on that one. I'm, I'm not sure. So the sure. I'm just going to speak out there. Just name by him, though. Okay. <laughs> Hi, guys. Brandon, <laughs> hiding in, lurking in the background. So the, the goal with the water is no minerals. It's less... The, obviously it needs to be clean water, but we're looking for no minerals in it. So there's no mineral deposits. So there's no corrosion more so than ultra purified water. That having been said, since I've not been up here with these guys and I've been able to do some research, the internet says that distilled water has a 0 0.5 parts per million total dissolved solids. So it is quite a bit cleaner apparently than that reverse osmosis. The really short version, don't overcomplicate it. Just get distilled water. It's really inexpensive. Yeah, yeah. And it's exactly. more of a hassle to go to the store than yeah. the money. Yeah, most most yeah. Walmarts or grocery stores will have gallon jugs of distilled water that you can pick up for about a dollar. So that's definitely the way to go. Keep it simple. What else? Okay, one more question as of right now. With your coolant reroute kit, the hose was very straight and would kink around the stock air box or intake tube rather. Is there a fix around that? I'd believe you have the fix in front of you right there. So the, the question is, we have a kinky hose and a reroute uh, with a stock style radiator. So, right? That I am assuming because it shouldn't be a problem with that. So, so with uh, cross flow, the inlet is off, offset outbound, outward a little bit further. So it does help with that. And are we ever going to have a custom silicone hose? We are still asking Brandon if that's a great <laughs> idea or not. So. <laughs> We do see that um, there, there could be some issues with stock style radiators and maybe it could fit a little bit better um, with the custom hose, but uh, we'll see if we'll get around to it or not. So. I do know that the, uh, what did I just put on? The Skunk 2 intake manifold. Oh, well, that's really tough. Um, I, I don't think that our hose with the coolant reroute is going to work for with us coming to uh, the throttle body linkage um, wheel there is in direct line with this so if you have a skunk too and you're thinking about a reroute you might want to reassess uh, how, how much of a problem that would be so not implausible but there's going to be some junctions in there and some 90s it's a little require some extra work yeah to make it to make it thinking outside of the box yes anything else uh no we we uh, got freddie's question about the reroute kit so I think we're good. Hey. Suggestion? Yes. Can we just point out all the oh, stuff you talked yeah. about on the car so people yeah. can see it installed? No, the car over here is a great idea. Low seats fit in the car. So you can see there next to Nick that uh, no issues, as long as you are smart about it, with the reroute hose um, on the, on the crossflow. Uh, if you imagine that a little bit more inboard, things get a little complicated. The NAA, NA6, uh, the throttle body inlet, is not helping the situation on an NB. It's a little bit more straight down, so less of an issue there. Correct. Nice seal on, we're just pretty much reiterating everything that we talked about. So a nice seal on the airflow kit to the radiator. 
there. Um, just point out the other part, just stage three fans, cross flow, shroud. Ah, uh, yes. Um, so this is our stage three uh, fan kit here. Uh, the airflow kit uh, with the, the shroud and the two uh, brushless ball fans uh, mounted to our crossflow radiator. Um, you can see here we have a little piece uh, here to help keep the air from deflecting up and over uh, the radiator and um, the uh, uh, airflow kit back here um, to make as much air as possible flow through that heat exchanger and not up and around. Um, same thing goes on the sides like we talked about. You want to make sure those are all sealed up. Uh, we also have our NA overflow bottle here. Uh, which you can replace uh, that uh, that cracked uh, plastic or yellowed plastic one that's in your car now uh, with one of these to keep that from happening again. Uh, let's see what else. Um, mentioned the uh, coolant reroute here uh, with our cross flow. That outlet is moved farther over, so that hose is much more of a straight shot. On the NVs, it's even more of a straight shot here. Um, with the stock radiator, this uh, inlet is further over, and this hose will kink uh, as we covered in that in that question there. Uh, it doesn't look like we're really going to have a very good shot. Travis will try about uh, the reroute uh, from the connection to the turbo there. Hey, they're back there, uh, a little hidden. This area, you know, the blob of blackness. That's one of the two of those. So, And I still believe that we are the only reroute that has that option. So, hey, cool for us. What else doing this? Any others? Nope. Okay. Well, uh, thank you guys for following along. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Um, if you have any other questions that we didn't get to, uh, please mention them in the comments below and we will get to them um, after the video has been posted. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys.